this is Marla Martinson, and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid, and I have a really exciting guest today. His name is Greg S. Reed, and he is a best-selling author, acclaimed speaker, filmmaker, a natural entrepreneur known for giving his spirit and a knack for translating complicated situations into simple, digestible concepts. Right. And he, Greg has been hand-selected by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to help carry on the teaching found in the Bible of Personal Achievement, Think and Grow Rich. He's published in over 45 books, 28 bestsellers, five motion pictures, featured in countless magazines, and uh, he has a lot of great information for us today. So hello and welcome. You know who, who acclaims me to be a great speaker is me, right? <laughs> well, that's the most important thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, and every time I hear something like that, I go, "Why? Why? You, don't you know who I think I am?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I attended your amazing um, uh, event last summer called the Secret Knock, and mm -hmm. you are an incredible speaker. And I was so impressed that just all day, you know, you you could speak and interview people and and just off the cuff, and you're amazing. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, Secret Knock kind of blown up. It's interesting. It started with twelve people in a living room, and now it's uh, kind of a kind of a neat thing. We just got hit the Forbes list, the number two must attend event for this year, and no one even knows about it. So that, that's pretty neat in itself. Well, that's how, so. How did you start the Secret Knock? What and tell us what it is. Uh, well, people wanted to have access to a lot of the people that I fortunately get access to. As you talked about the Napoleon Hill stuff, is uh, I, I got access to go interview today's top modern thought leaders to find out what they did. And so my friends kept saying, how do I get to meet them? And we began with 12 people in my living room where I started parading these people through. And then other people wanted to hear about it and other people. And, and now that it's kind of just blown up where uh, about three, 400 people come in a couple times a year and they get to meet my friends, including you, which is really, really cool. It was fun. And I mean, the most amazing people. We had the guy who invented the magnetic strip, the mm. man who started the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Right. Uh, we had... I mean, tell us a few of those. We had the most amazing people there. There's things that you don't even realize. Wow, this person exists. You know, you don't think who who invented that or who started right. that. So. The guy who invented email. Email. Had, okay, there. E, the guy yeah, who we invented. Have, we, we have, yeah, you know, it's interesting. We have some of the, uh, one guy, Gene Land, Landrum, is, is kind of a cool cat too. He started a, a restaurant chain. Everyone said he was crazy. He says you cannot bring a rat into the restaurant business. We've been trying forever to keep him out, but everyone fought against him until one person believed in him, and they started the first one, and that became Chuck E. Cheese. And there's so many of these stories behind the stories that people don't know, and that's the idea of, of why we put it together. So thanks for attending. Thanks for being part of it and spreading the word. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's so uh, inspiring, and it's like two, two or three days you do this uh, twice a year now. So, and how did you start in the personal growth world? I mean, you've just exploded. So, how, what started you in this? I think, like most people, you know, it kind of finds you. I, I was in business for 20 years. I, I worked in the advertising industry and I owned my own business and sold it in my late 30s. And what had any type of success in my life was based on the teachings that we found from these amazing people, from the Brian Tracy's and the Zig Ziglar's and all these amazing things. Napoleon Hill, needless to say, tried Tremendous Jones. And it left an indelible mark. And when I realized that I had the opportunity to kind of carry on that torch, so to speak, and and start sharing some of the things that I actually did, not things I learned about, but things that we did, um, I, I went on that path. And it's been an amazing journey. So basically, you um, took those those things that you learned, and then you just started sharing them with people. So you started speaking. Correct. And it started just... Right from the heart, you know, rather than one of these things where you point a finger at people and say, you know, you should do this and you should do this. I don't know if people can relate. So what we do is we tell stories and just share little anecdotes of amazing people that have done amazing things. And perhaps you can see yourself in that situation rather than someone planting that seed, uh, you know, directly. So it's basically in your own mind. And so then you started writing books and mm -hmm. books about it too. And so what would you su suggest? And that's, to that's, the, that's the crazy part, by the way. Yeah. People don't know this, but you know, I got a D in English. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> and it's interesting thing is that, you know, my mentor taught me, says, if you want to be a best-selling author, hang out with them, you know, surround yourself with people that are doing what you want to do. And I went to Barnes and Noble. I bought all your every bestseller. I called those people up, said, teach me. They did. And here we are 50 some odd books later and all this good stuff. And I, the first book I did is called The Millionaire Mentor. I was turned down by 268 
publishers, printers, and agents in a row. And the 269th one said, we'll do your book. All you got to do is change the title, the beginning, the middle, and the end. (laughs) (laughs) And I took their counsel and did, and here we are today. Well, and then, so did you learn to, to write better and all that, or did it's, I mean, a lot of it's great editors, right? Because I write, and I remember I had wanted to write all my life, used to write poetry as a kid, and then I didn't, we didn't have computers all the time, only until like two, in 2000 I got a computer, so I would be trying in the 80s to type out something on a typewriter, and you get your white out, and it's just a mess, and I, this doesn't work, I can't do it, I don't even know where to put the commas, or, and then a, a, a best-selling author friend of mine, I told him once, I said, I, how do you do this, I don't know where to, how to, he goes, Marla, that's what editors are for, I don't know either. So like you said, you get help. You find out who's doing it. Well, it's interesting. There's a big difference. An author is the name who goes on the book, and a writer is the person who wrote the book. <laughs> you know, they're usually two different people. Same thing when you hear Katy Perry sing a song. doesn't mean she necessarily wrote the song. Yeah, and, She's the author of it. And, and that's so, interesting because some people have ghost writers, and then some people write their books. Correct. So basically everything is my words. It's my message. It's my stories. I just have people craft it in a way that sounds better than this knucklehead writing it. So there you go. So for people who, you know, the publishing world has changed so much since I was published the first time in 2008. It was just coming at the end. I had a traditional publishing deal, but then it was at the end of all of that. And and then now it's so hard to get a publishing deal. You have to have a huge platform and Twitter followers and Facebook and speaking to get to get that. Otherwise, you can now people can easily self-publish. So. Well, yeah, there's so many places like createspace.com uh, is a great place for people to go and, and get their stuff worked on for pennies on the dollar. You got to imagine 65% of all the major publishers have gone out of business in the last 10 years. We only have one bookstore left, you know, Barnes & Noble, besides of all the mom and pop shops. So, I mean, it's not a, a great market if you really look at it from a non-emotional standpoint. You go, okay, there's only one bookstore, you know, uh, or live when we were – there's Crown Books and B. Dalton and all the different ones and Borders, but the realities are it's a dying fad, uh, unbelievably, where people are actually reading hard to cover books. They're going online and they're reading more of the digital versions. And I'm hoping that it'll have a, a resurgence uh, one of these days, but right now it's so easy for people to get their words out because you can type it up and get it printed up on uh, you know Amazon as a download instantaneously, and everyone can become an author, which is outstanding. It's outstanding, but it's also hard to get noticed because everybody, everybody you meet has a book now. So, so mm. you know, it is harder. Yeah, I mean, this is you know, my iPhone. I read my books on here now. Yeah, <laughs> I exactly. Just, I've got a lot you know, of books you know, here, but doing major book deals is is, is different. Uh, you know, I'm very fortunate where I've got a, an agent who who really reps me quite well, and it's it's beautiful. On the same note, it took you know forty some odd books before. You know, I got that big break, so to speak, and people don't realize that too. You know, look, it's all about perseverance. That's stickability. That's the message that we share. It's a matter of when you know in your heart of hearts you got something to share, you don't let other people talk you out of that dream. And I would never let these publishers and agents tell me what I could and could not say, but more importantly, the people that I would impact. If I would have listened to them, I mean, imagine there's probably millions of people that would have missed my message, or not even my message, the message of these amazing people I've met. So therefore, shame on them for holding somebody back from getting their message out. And with today's medium, I say everyone should become an author. Everyone should get it out because what you think is common sense to you could be something exactly someone else is waiting to hear. Right, that's a great point. And what you know, I was because I was going to ask you, what about people who have a dream? That there's so many people going to jobs that they hate. They're doing the mundane tasks. They're but they have these dreams in the back of their head, and they're too afraid to do. How can I do it? I've got to make this living. And mm-hmm. and there's so many people that are not getting their message out or, or living their dream or have they have like Les Brown says that you've got something more mm-hmm. in you that you should bring out to share. You have gifts. And Wayne Dyer says, don't die with your music still in you. So what are just some a couple of tips to help people like maybe break out and do what you did? Uh, too bad. I mean, that's that's my my big counsel. You know, we are where we choose to be, and if you're too afraid or scared, then too bad. Suck it up, sucker fish. That's your choice. And the realities are, it's the people that go into that fear fit head on are the ones that get the books published, that get the recognition. On the same note, why would you deserve to have that type of attention if you're so afraid to get it out to the marketplace? Uh, it's an author's responsibility, not a publisher. A publisher prints a book. That's it. They have distribution. That's it. It's a 
it's the up to the author 100% to market, sell, and get your stuff out there. That's the way it is. Last year, there was 968,000 books published. 99.4% sold 100 copies or less because mm -hmm. that's all your family and friends will buy. <laughs> so the reality is you're right. You do have to get out and market and people want to let it die inside them. It's shameful, but that is yeah. their choice. Yeah. We are where we choose to be. Right, right. It is just about about getting your butt down and writing it. Or people would say to me, I, how do, I want to write a book. I wish I could. Or I wish I could. I speak French. I wish I could speak French. Well, all you have to do is get a book and a cassette to, or a <laughs> CD or whatever like I did. <laughs> get Sign up for a class. You know, it's just taking those the first step. Well, think about it. Again, like the, you go to those places I just mentioned. Uh, you know, there's so many places like Odesk and Elance where you can hire people with PhDs in Malaysia for, you know, 50 bucks a day to go out and sit down and interview you and pull your stories out and write it into a book form. There is no excuse anymore, oh, except for our, we choose not to. And again, that's cool because we are where we choose to be. Okay, good, good. Um, and, and you talk about your mentor. Who is your mentor? Or who are oh. you, you know? I've had so many, but I'll show you one up here. His name is Charlie Tremendous Jones oh. and, and up there. And, and, and he had the greatest quote. He says that we are the same today as we'll be in five years except for two things, the people you meet and the books you read. It's who you hang out with. It's what you put in your head that determines your character as a person. And I've got his picture overlooking me because he was one of the greatest mentors because – you know, a good mentor will tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. And he never told me what I wanted to hear ever. So he must have been a great mentor. <laughs> and so the whole thing is he was a, a father figure who really pointed me in the right direction. And he spoke to me the same way as I'm speaking to your people right now. It's like, you know, we are where we choose to be and this is the direction you choose. But more importantly, it's who you hang out with and the, the intention that you have that will determine who you are and how other people see you. I'll give you a great little tidbit. He said in this industry, there's something called a high road and a low road. He goes, the high road are the people from Aristotle and Socrates, Plato to modern day thought leaders of – you know, the Earl Nightingale and Napoleon Hills. He goes, why is that you can name those people out of the billions that have lived? He goes, on this side, he goes, is the low road. These are the carnival barkers that you run to the back of the room with your credit card and buy the stuff, all the way down to these hypnotists that will literally put you in a trance to buy your stuff and you get buyer's remorse. He goes, if you go down this way, you'll make money today, overnight, because you'll make more money you can even imagine because you're a good sales guy. Up here, you're going to make nothing. you got to pay your dues. It'll take 10 years. You won't be respected. you got to pick people up from the airport, put flyers on cars. Are you willing to do it? And he goes, probably not. He goes, but if you do go that direction and you finally are respected, not only will you be accepted to join that playground, but you'll be allowed to dip down and make a living and come back and still be respected. But these people will never be invited to play in your sandbox. Mm -hmm. Which way are you going to go? Right. And so for myself, I decided only to go the higher road and hang out with the people that were actually living their message rather than going out and just selling it. Awesome. And I always, I've read that quote where you are, your income is directly the five people that you, your five best friends or the five people, yeah. five people you we, we, Yeah, we are a reflection of the five people we hang around the most. Our attitude, income, and lifestyle is the average of that group. Okay. So if you hang around smokers, you're a smoker. If you hang around jocks, you're a jock. If you hang around people that complain, gripe, moan, that's your conversation. If you hang around people that are like you, positive solution searching, looking for the way out, that becomes our daily you know, dialogue within our brain. And it's very important to make sure that we're surrounding ourselves with people that are encouraging and uplifting and not dream stealers. You know, one of the greatest interviews I did with a guy who invented string theory. And his name was John Schwartz. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's the difference between people who are successful and those who are not? And he said, successful people seek counsel and failures listen to opinion. Mm -hmm. I go, what's the difference? He goes, opinion is based on ignorance, lack of knowledge, inexperience, like a family friend who's never done it. He goes, counsel is based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. They already paved the way. If you go to someone who's never been a public speaker and say, I'm going to be one, they're going to say, you can't do that. Don't you know how scary that is? You'll never make it. Why not? I don't know. You just can't. That's her opinion. If I go to Les Brown and say, I'm going to be a speaker, he's going to say, great. Before you get started, here's some tidbits, uh, tools that you want to know and give me counsel based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. John Schwartz said, if we would spend our daily lives only seeking and listening to counsel and ignoring people's opinion, that's the day your life changes. Oh, I love that because we all have somebody in our life, whether it's our spouse or a parent or a friend who their fear uh, gives us the opinion that we can't do it because it's just fear, like you said. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting. I live 
in, uh, in really a rough part of the world. It's called La Jolla, California. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. I, I know. I'm one block away from the beach, and I see these surfers all the time. And it's really amazing to me because what happens is that when these surfers go out in the big waves, and they're coming, and imagine if a big wave is coming, and you hold on to your surfboard because you're scared. As soon as that wave hits you, it's going to push you down and crack you in half and break your surfboard or your body. He goes, a good surfer does something called a duck dive. They take the tip of the board and they go right into the belly of the wave. And as soon as they go in the belly of the wave, they pop up to the other side and they miss all the drama. Well, great leaders understand that that's what they do for fear of success. When everything, something comes at them, they don't run from it and hide. They go right into it and they pop back up. And I realized for myself in life and business and relationships and everything, the more that we can duck dive, the more we come out on top. Awesome. And, and being like the tree, just going with it instead of, you know, standing still and breaking. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll use your analogy. There you go. Going with the flow, right? Going with the waves. There you go. Are you going to start singing Kumbaya and, and uh, get some <laughs> green tea and a dream catcher out now? Well, I have fake coffee here. It's nice. Arrow. It's chicory, and I put it in my Edgar Allan Poe mug. <laughs> Gotta like that one. So tell us about your new book with Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor, for me, is one of my big heroes. I adore him. I got to meet him at your event and, and took a picture with him. Yeah, in fact, he did this. Uh, this is one of his things. His, here's one of his books. I've got uh, that. Right, right. I love right, right. it. This is Bob Proctor. He gave him out his gifts to everyone at Secret Knock. Yeah. So he and I did a book to together. It's called Think and Grow Rich. Thoughts are things. And the very first three words of uh, Think and Grow Rich are thoughts are things. And we went to Dell, so we went and interviewed everyone from Holocaust survivors, interviewed for Schindler's List, all the way down to the founder of TED Talks and the founder of JetBlue, the founder of Holistic Medicine, and found out you know, how their thoughts became reality. And here's what we discovered. Thoughts are not things. It's thoughts backed by massive action become things. If thoughts were things, you know, I'd be a pizza right now because it's almost lunchtime and I have lots of lunch, right? <laughs> but if I think about that pizza and I get off my tail and I actually go to the pizza store and buy a piece of pizza, it becomes reality. So it's thoughts backed by massive action become a reality. <laughs> okay, I love that because just what you were talking about, it's like too bad if you're not going to take those actions to get your dreams done, it's not going to get done. So yeah, you, it's, when we talk about positive thinking, the law of attraction, it yeah. has to all be backed by getting your butt up and doing it. Okay, but the law of attraction, the first part of it, or the second part is action. I mean, you got to take action. It's the action behind the attraction that makes your dream come true. You got to think it, feel it, but ultimately you got to do it. Um, so, you know, it's like the movie in The Secret. You see that kid have his vision board of a bicycle and one magically appears. And that's cute and that's nice, but that's not my reality. I, I know that if I want a bicycle, I got a vision board and that's what I want. I have a critical picture. But then I also know I could go mow the neighbor's yard to start making money so that I can save up for that bike. And when people realize, again, that they can have anything they want, they don't have to magically have it appear because – Number one, what's the benefit of that? But more number two, you really appreciate it more when you work for it. Exactly. And by the way, you saw my business partner, Hilliard, walk behind us. Yes. He's, a, he's kind of rude that way, but he, he always likes to say hi and be part Does of these Does Hilliard stuff. have anything to say to us? Yeah, uh, Hilliard. Got the secret knock. There it is. <laughs> he's, a, he's a regular wordsmith. He writes all my... <laughs> and, and speaking, you know, you mentioned somebody else that was at your event was the woman that invented holistic medicine, which, you know, I'm a big holistic uh, person. Um, Get out here. I can hardly tell from the chicory coffee. <laughs> and my Moldavite necklace. Um, yeah, this amazing woman, she's in her 90s, and she coined the phrase holistic medicine, and, and I forgot her name now, but she was. Dr. Gladys McGeary, Dr. amazing Gladys. woman, 90 some odd years old, uh, first woman inducted in the medical, uh, American Medical Association. She invented the, the baby uh, mobile wagon back in the you know, 60s and 70s so women could have you know, childbirth at home naturally. And it's really interesting. This woman has lived through so many things, and she just says that basically, you know, where we're sitting there trying to combine Western, Eastern, and all this different stuff, it goes, it's just medical. I mean, the realities are people have lived for thousands of years before there was you know, all these crazy tools and things. Now we're living longer, thank goodness, than modern medicine. On the same note, there's a lot of things that we can cure ourselves uh, that we don't need to actually pop something that was man-made. 
Yeah, that's just uh, recent, this man-made pharmaceutical stuff that we're, we're getting pumped with. So Yeah, <laughs> I, I prefer not to do too much of the man-made things because, you know, anal leakage and uh, blurry vision is not <laughs> something I'd like to... Sexual dysfunction and yeah, I'm, I'm in suicidal pass- thoughts. <laughs> exactly. All right. Yeah, give us one of your your sound effects. All right. Well, that's basically what I got. Hey, wait a second. You got a joke to tell? <laughs> I got to get some of those. Okay, tell us about this film, American Hero, with Frank, Frank Shankowitz. He, Sh- Shankowitz. He's the founder of Look, Make-A-Wish I, Foundry. I, I know. You, you want me to keep telling all my secrets and all that stuff's going on. What is this, Oprah? So we <laughs> okay, see this him. is my last interrogational question, all right? And yeah, an American hero is a life story of Frank Shankwitz, uh, one the 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 father of uh, what we know now as the Make a Wish Foundation, one of the original founders, and it's really interesting. It's his life story. It's not all about a Make a Wish, by the way. The movie, it's his life story about growing up as a child, being abandoned, um, you know, not having people to rely on, but he was always coming from a giving spirit. I mean, this guy was literally abandoned. At, he was 11 years old and still found a way to give back to life and society from the military to being a 40 year veteran police officer and realizing by granting one kid's wish basically completely transformed not only his life, but many lives around the globe. And the moral is, is that, you know, what excuse do we have, whether we're a teacher, a fireman, a politician or a billionaire, the reality is, is everyone can make some type of positive impact, uh, have a ripple effect on the planet in which we exist. Well, Greg, you are definitely having a ripple effect on on society, so thank you so much, and thanks for taking this time to chat with me, and where's the best place that people can find you? I go to the bookstore, Barnes & Noble, pick up the books, uh, wow. you know, and, and, and participate, and also if you want to learn about Secret Knock, it's secretknock.co. We left the M off. It's private. We only invite friends and friends of friends and sincere alumni and friends. There you go. So it's secretknock.co. Okay. Uh, and come join us. Come play. Um, everyone gets, uh, I guess, screened, pre-screened to come. And if you actually qualify to participate, it could literally change your life. Okay, awesome. And bookgreg.com, is that a good site? That's your yeah, yeah, if you want to go watch some free videos and stuff like that. But again, we're not selling anything. The more important thing is we're just here to share, give back. And if there's anything I can do to be of contribution, visit Book Greg and just send me an email and I'm here to help out any way I can. Thanks, Greg. Keep smiling. Thank you.